Hey everybody. Today I want to talk about the nitrogen cycle and in particular I want to talk about the denitrification part of the nitrogen cycle. But before we get into that I do want to make one very important clarification. I've been getting a lot of comments over the last several weeks where I've been talking about uh, setting up this deep sand bed or this deep substrate bed aquarium that we're going to be talking about in this video. And a lot of the comments I've gotten seem to be conflating or mixing two ideas together. And that is the idea that uh, a self-sustaining tank that is sort of its own self-sustained ecosystem with its own uh, food web or food chain, uh, that is sort of interchangeable with the nitrogen cycle or with this deep bed substrate or whatever. Those are two separate things. Don't conflate this idea of this sort of water change free, self-sustaining, tank with the idea of a simple deep bed substrate that is for the purposes of denitrification. Those are two separate things. You may have it set up so both things are happening in a very sophisticated aquarium system, but those two things are still very separate. And what we're going to be talking about is the denitrification aspect of the nitrogen cycle and the nitrogen cycle alone. We will be talking in future videos about self-sustaining tanks and tanks that don't really need water changes and so on and so forth. That's going to be down the road a little bit. That's a different topic. Where we're going to start is with the very, very basics. I've never done a deep bed, or perhaps I have, but we'll get to that in a moment. Um, I've never deliberately, shall I say, done a deep substrate or a deep sand bed tank that is set up for the purposes of denitrification. And there's a lot of controversy within the hobby as to whether you really can establish a denitrifying cycle within your aquarium. So before we get any further ahead of ourselves, let's talk about what the nitrogen cycle is. And I'm not talking about the nitrogen cycle as we think about it in our aquariums. That's only one part of the nitrogen cycle. That's one third of the nitrogen cycle. And we can start there because that's where we're all familiar with it, or at least we should be familiar with it. You've got your waste product that is ammonia that comes from your rotting vegetation or fish food or whatever. And that ammonia is a nitrogen based uh, molecule. So that's where nitrogen plays into this right from the beginning. You've got your ammonia, your ammonia gets oxidized and it gets broken down and eventually we end up with nitrate. And then what happens is there's different type of uh, bacteria. It's an anaerobic bacteria, whereas the first bacteria uses oxygen and oxidizes the uh, nitrogen and turns it into nitrate. The next type of bacteria lives in an oxygen free environment and actually steals the oxygen from the nitrate and converts the nitrate back into nitrogen gas, which then gets off gassed either through the soil or through the water system or aquarium or wherever and goes back up into the atmosphere. That's the next third of the nitrogen cycle. The final third of the nitrogen cycle is the process by which that nitrogen gets converted back into food, which then gets consumed and then gets turned back into waste, which then gets converted to ammonia, which goes back into nitrate, which gets broken into nitrogen gas, which goes through, and that's the nitrogen cycle. It's a complete cycle all the way around where that nitrogen just keeps going around and around and around Around. That is something that happens. We know that happens. That's not speculation. That's not wondering whether this really does happen. We know what species of bacteria cause this. All of that is well established science. Where there seems to be some question is whether that happens in our aquarium. We know it happens in the real world, but a lake or a river or even a muddy field where you've got denitrifying bacteria that are living deep in the soil those environments are very different than our aquarium. Our aquarium is an artificial environment. I don't care how you set it up. I don't care how naturalistic you set it up. I don't care how self-sustaining you've set it up. If it's a box of water you have in your house that is being kept alive by an aquarium pump, it is nothing approaching natural. And you're never going to get the same dynamics that you're going to get in a real, true, natural environment. We can do a long, you know, we can do a lot to recapitulate what happens in nature. 
but it's still not nature. It's still a long way from all the variants and fluctuations and variables and everything else that happens in a real living ecosystem like a lake or a river and you know the sky and the sun and everything else. It's a huge difference to whatever we've got set up in our aquarium. So just because we know this does happen in nature, does it actually happen in the aquarium? And the only real science I've seen so far is a viewer sent me a link. I haven't read through all of it yet, but it is some scientific studies that seem to indicate that you can't establish this denitrifying um, bacteria within your aquarium. Now, I will say that so far, the only study I read, I have a problem with their methodology right off the bat. They only ran the study for about three months and it takes about six months just to establish that full cycle of denitrifying bacteria. So if you ran a study for three months and said, it didn't work, well, of course it didn't work. You didn't even give it time to establish and you're already saying it didn't work. So I haven't read through any of the other studies. I don't know what their conclusions were or why they're saying it doesn't work, but there is some stuff out there that suggests it doesn't work work and the only stuff that really suggests it does work is anecdotal information. I know the difference between science and anecdotal information and I'm sorry to say that with what I'm going to be doing I'm only going to be adding to the anecdotal information. You know, I'm not going to be doing really tightly controlled scientific experiments. The sample size is going to be exactly one tank. I'm not going to be using uh, various depths of gravel. I'm not going to be using various size, you know, grains of substrate. There's going to be no control. This is just going to be me tinkering with some stuff in my basement and getting an idea of what's going on. And it will be more anecdotal evidence, but it will be more anecdotal evidence that we can add to this. I'll share all my methodology and go over everything of what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, etc. Which brings me to the other tank that I think I may have actually already set up a deep bed sand or a deep sand bed tank without even trying and it seems to be functioning already. So let's have a look at that tank real quick. I call it my foot tank. And once we've had a look at that, I'll talk about why uh, that tank is, you know, pertinent to this conversation. All right, so this is the tank I refer to as my foot tank. It sits at the foot of my waterfall, and that's the only reason I refer to it as that. And when I set it up, I intended to have some land on one side. I was gonna have red clawed crabs in this tank. And then I wanted some depth of water on the other side so that I could have some guppies and a few little fish swimming around on the other side. And so what I did was I put this partition of plexiglass in there at an angle. I siliconed it in and I backfilled this side with about an inch or two of gravel at the bottom. And then I just filled it up with sand. And initially I was getting... Uh, a lot of bowing and swelling, the bending on that piece of plexiglass because of the water pressure building up behind it. And so I drilled a whole series of holes across the face of this piece of plexiglass. I know we can't possibly see it at the moment, but this is actually perforated and it allows water to flow through either, either direction. I don't know, but I was getting bending this way as though all of the pressure from here was pushing against it. So now the water can flow through there if that's the direction it's going to flow, but would obviously do so very slowly through all that sand and then through, I don't know, maybe half a dozen quarter inch holes I've got drilled into that uh, piece of plexiglass. Again, it was just enough to relieve the pressure. It was not meant to be uh, a source of water flow. It was just meant to get the pressure off of uh, the backside of that plexiglass. So that's how the tank is set up. You can see that as far as the plants go, I've got a couple little java ferns in there. I haven't touched them in years. They just don't really grow, but they also don't really die. They just sit there. I got a little bit of duckweed growing on the surface, but not a whole lot because this tank doesn't get very much light. If you'll notice, I don't really have algae or cyanobacteria growing on anything. And I also have about what would you say that is three inches of mulm that is actually all mulm i know that looks gross and nasty but that's how this tank's been sitting forever in fact when i get in there and do water changes and i draw a bunch of that mulm out of there with the gravel vac the tank actually smells funny and the water gets cloudy it really actually disrupts this tank when i remove all of that mulm so that's the tank in question so let's get back to it so when I set that tank up, 
I never intended it to be any kind of deep sand bed or denitrification. At that point, I'd never even heard of the denitrification process. I simply backfilled that back section of the um, aquarium with sand because play sand is cheap and I didn't want to put a bunch of heavy rocks in there. I literally was just trying to fill space and I did it with old gravel that I had laying around and sand. And as time went on, that tank became really neglected. I just never really do anything with it. And as you saw by the depth of the mulm that collects in that tank, I never do anything to that tank. Eventually, when the water level gets so low that I realize like it's you know almost empty, I'll top it all the way back off. I'll put like five gallons of water back in it and do a massive top off and then I ignore it. And it sits there for weeks and weeks and weeks and eventually I'll do another top off. It may get one water change a year, maybe. If that, I just, I never do anything to that tank. It's got very few fish in it. It only has four or five little guppies in it. Uh, they do breed, so I do have new guppies coming and going in there. Uh, I've got a cherry barb and I've got some ghost shrimp. So it's not a lot of uh, fish. I do have a bunch of snails living in that tank. So there is a fair bio load considering there's only about seven gallons of water in the system. Uh, the plants grow super, super slowly, so the plants aren't really uh, a way to remove the nitrate. In other words, what I'm saying is that tank, when I do a nitrate test on that tank, that it should be crimson red. Nitrate does not evaporate. It doesn't just go away out of your tank. If I'm feeding that tank every day and I feed that tank way more than I should. Every time I feed that tank, I ask myself why I put so much food in that tank because there's only a few fish and there's little shrimp. And yet I put food in it like I'm feeding my office tank. Every day I put food like that in that tank. The nitrate level in that tank should be, it should be obscene. It should be so high. And yet month after month after month, I test the nitrate in that tank and it's five parts per million, 10 parts per million maybe. I checked it before I started this video and it was about five parts per million. It's like a yellowy orange color on the test. And I have not done a water change on that tank in probably a year. I don't know how to explain that. I'm not saying there's no, no, you know, aside from the deep sand bed, you know, the denitrification process, that's, that's obviously a way to explain it. And right now, that is my best way to explain it. I have no other reasonable way to explain why that tank does not have nitrate just building and building and building in it. It should. It doesn't have... You know, the, the amount of plant... I, I would have to have pothos plant growing across the floor... I would have to have such vigorous plant growth in there to suck up the nitrate that's being produced in that tank. I don't have any kind of plant growth in there. I don't have algae growth. I don't have, you know, I basically have a couple of pieces of java fern that just sit there and exist. They don't grow. They don't flourish. I don't have stuff in there drinking the nitrate out of that tank. I have no way to explain why that tank never builds up nitrate. It sits at five or 10 parts per million. Now, again, I, there's a lot of things in this world that I don't know about or don't understand fully. There could be other mechanisms that are responsible for why that nitrate is not building up. This is not scientific conclusive proof. This is not definitive by any means, but it certainly makes me scratch my head as to what is going on. Is that tank being denitrified by that deep sand bed? So what I'm doing now is we've set up another tank. I've put about five and a half inches of, uh, it's a planted substrate gravel. It's a mixed bimodal gravel. It's got some really fine sandy particles in it. And then it's got larger uh, granularly, more, more gravelly type particles in it. But even the larger particles are really porous. It's designed to have water flow through it. It's designed to get compacted uh, when it gets down deeper. This is going, this stuff should be perfect for what I'm trying to do. Because what I'm trying to do is establish a very simple deep bed substrate to see if I can get the denitrification going. I'm not trying to set up multiple layers capped with sand. I'm not trying to do lots of plants. I'm not trying to do any of that more sophisticated stuff. I'm not trying to have plants in there that are drinking the nitrate out. If I got a lot of plants in the tank, it's going to ruin the experiment. I want nothing in that tank that could account for if that tank just seems to always have a really low level of nitrate in it, I want nothing to account for that other than that deep substrate bed. If I got a bunch of water spray growing in there, 
I personally think people way overrate how much nitrate plants soak out of your aquarium, but it would be a variable. If I had plants growing in there, somebody would be able to argue that your plants are in there. I do have one small Anubias, but again, Anubias is a very slow growing plant. It's not going to do anything in the way of really drinking nitrate out of that tank. So if over time, I still keep seeing really, really low levels of nitrate in that tank, then again, it's just still going to be more anecdotal evidence. It's just going to be my subjective experience, but you know, that's all I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to pretend I'm a scientist and I'm laying out the definitive end all be all of information about this topic. I'm just tinkering for my own experiences and I'm trying to share it with you as we go along so you can take away whatever anecdotal evidence you want from what I'm doing. And so we're going to wait and see what happens. My regular viewers know I am the last person that will simply just go along with what everybody says because everybody's saying it. I know a lot of people say that this denitrification process works. I don't know. I'm not so sure. I, I don't think it doesn't work. I don't know if it does work. I'm just, I'm going to wait and see. I don't know. But based on what I've seen in my little foot tank, I don't know how else to explain that. So I'm definitely leaning towards this being something that does work in our aquarium. We know it functions in, like we understand this process. We know that process happens in nature. Why wouldn't it occur in our aquarium? You know, at this point, I need something to explain to me why it wouldn't work in an aquarium before I'm going to really start disbelieving it. And of course, I've got anecdotal evidence of one of my own tanks that seems consistently for two years now to consistently show me almost no nitrate buildup in that tank. For years, it's been like that. I don't ever do water changes on that tank and there it sits. So... That's where we sit right now. Again, we will be doing more information about, you know, more sophisticated tanks and so on and so forth. But for this experiment and for this tank, what we're going to be talking about is just the nitrogen cycle. And all we're trying to do is decide whether or not there's reason to believe a deep sand bed or a deep substrate bed will give you the denitrification process. There's a lot of talk about whether hydrogen sulfide gas or other toxic gases might be produced. You might get gas pockets that build up. I'm a little dubious to that, but I do see bubbles rising up out of the bottom of ponds and streams and stuff all the time. So I know this off-gassing process does happen in nature. So once again, why would that not happen in our aquarium? I don't know, but we're gonna do this and we're gonna find out. So I'd certainly, you know, enjoy your company as we travel along. We're gonna find out together. I hope you enjoy it too. So make sure you're subscribed. Don't forget to check out my other channel where we actually get out in the water and go and look at streams and rivers and lakes and stuff like that. I go fishing, kayaking, etc. cetera. That stands outdoors and more. There's a link to it down below. I do memberships now. And of course you can always show your appreciation by doing the super thanks. That's always much appreciated on my part. So thanks again. Again, make sure you're subscribed. Don't forget to hit that like button and I'll see you real soon in the next one.